got to where we are now because there is you can't hide behind any false advertising or false claims on a product. If it truly isn't a good product, people will not buy it. And they won't buy it because they're going to see the stories of other people having bad experiences with the company or the product. And so there is no hiding from the truth behind your product. To talk about why Yelp is so dissatisfying to a lot of businesses, you have to go all the way back to 1994 when Yahoo launched a human edited search engine, basically a big giant card catalog for the internet. They got organized by human beings. Of course, human beings don't really scale to billions and billions of web pages. So in 99, Google came along with its automated algorithm. It captured web pages dynamically, automatically. It changed how search works, make it more relevant, also to make it so much easier to index and kind of assess and understand what was going on on the internet. It didn't require human beings, it required computers, which are much easier to scale, right? 2005, an entire industry of people were scheming Google's system to trick it into thinking certain websites were more relevant and helpful than they really were. And they were using things like link farms, link spam. So they made changes to their algorithm. They realized their older way of doing that is still relevant. They still use those attributes of their algorithm. They also recognized that the freshness of stuff on a page also helps to indicate whether that particular website continues to be relevant now. And that is the point at which freshness entered the conversation. So they started looking at when stuff was published, how frequently it was published and updated. Coincidentally, it was also the year Yelp launched. Yelp is by its very dynamic nature, jam packed with fresh information and millions of reviews every single day. Was it coincidence? Don't know. Could have been good planning on Yelp's part, TripAdvisor's part, but the cause of it really exploded Yelp, TripAdvisor, that entire, this entire genre that now vexes a lot of businesses. So that's the very brief lesson about the history of freshness. And we're sort of living in an era as things evolve, consumers get more engaged in the purchase decisions, sharing of brand content, all of these things. They actually become the creative and you don't get creative review. You can't sit down and say, okay, what are you gonna say about my brand? You know, what images are you gonna post? That's off brand, you can't do that. Right. And that's very frustrating for a lot of marketers because there's a lot of, uh, there's a big gap. There's kind of a donut hole left. I'm just sharing with, uh, with Chris. I think Indonesia has 175 or 178% mobile penetration and people having multiple mobile devices. So uh, you can't really talk about social media or, or digital marketing in any way without talking about the importance of mobile. So how, from your perspective, I'll start with you, Chris, how, how does mobile influence brand strategy, content development, uh, and social media? What, what are some of the implications of that? When people say, yes, but I don't know what to say there. I don't have anything interesting. I do what I do. I do pharmaceuticals marketing. That's not interesting. Well, it is interesting because there's no one else uniquely qualified to know that but you. This isn't so much about what you do in your profession as it is what you know. There's a gentleman I met. I, I gave a workshop several weeks ago to a group. They're in healthcare marketing, not the sexiest business in the world. It isn't the most intuitive place to have a breakout amazing blog post or LinkedIn post, right? It's, it's got a, a fairly limited audience. He's in marketing, so he, he wrote a post about marketing uh, from the perspective of his son who was selling uh, something for the Boy Scouts. And they had sat outside of Walmart you know, all day and no one bought the thing he was selling because he wasn't doing a good job marketing it. <laughs> and it was, it, it was a very good post. If I can uh, find it and you're interested to see it, I'll send it to you. It became one of the most shared posts on LinkedIn in 2014 total. Of everything on that platform, Richard Branson on down, this was one of the most shared things on LinkedIn. This guy works in healthcare IT and healthcare marketing. He's not Richard Branson, but he now has a massive following on LinkedIn, which will connect him to professional opportunities, no doubt. When you get a great review, when someone says, this was the most amazing, 15 pound burrito I have ever eaten in my life, and I eat a lot of 15 pound burritos. Show that off in any forum you can. If you have social media connected to your business and that's a big thing for you, you can show it off there. You can link to it uh, or you can uh, republish it there. You can also put it in an email newsletter. I, uh, I have pet insurance for my dog, which sounds funny to say. His insurance is better than my insurance. Uh, and 
They send out an email newsletter every month, and in there they have a review of the month in the newsletter that comes, that one actually comes from an, a pet insurance review blog. Believe it or not, that thing exists and it's huge. So they pull a review from that site and drop it into their email newsletter every month. It just kind of reinforces that they're in business to serve customers, right? So show off those great reviews. It makes the person who wrote it feel great. Only about 20% of consumers believe that a company is gonna to respond to them, 20%. Whether it's negative or positive, we don't really expect a business to, to say thank you or we're sorry, at least not in a really candid, authentic way. So, but when they do, there was like an 80% lift in, in retention or, uh, or advocacy, even among the, the negative reviews. So if you take a negative review and say, God, we're so sorry, that was a bad night, it's on us, please come back, they're more likely to say, hey, uh, you know, I'll try them again, they seem like good people. Thank you very much.